Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at pre having year returns. We're gonna to try to keep this video short. I have received some feedback recently saying that my videos are too long, and admittedly, I do get carried away sometimes. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. One of the things that we often will do is just look at seasonality, just like we will with the stock market. Now, we recognize that seasonality will only take you so far. Uh, it's certainly not going to play out in a very specific way every single cycle. But one of the things that we have done this, this pre-having year, which is in, if we just look at the 2023 year-to-date ROI, one of the exercises that we have previously carried out is taking the average of the last two pre-having years. And I know early on this year, it didn't really look it didn't really look like a great fit, but it really has been more or less following it really ever since, what, about half, not even halfway through the year, uh, day 165, we sort of started to follow it. And you can see that essentially what's happened since then is we've more or less stayed within that range of where the average of the last two prior pre-having years took us. Now, one of the things that's important to remember as well is that even in the pre-having year of 2019, you can see we you know we sort of topped out in the summer and let me go ahead and hide this average one right we sort of topped out in the summer but in 2019 there was a lot more volatility a significant amount more volatility in fact i mean this cycle this sort of this range up here looks like it barely did anything compared to the move that we saw in 2019 it, it seems like bitcoin really accelerated to that thirty thousand dollar mark 30 to thirty one thousand you know, back in what April, and since then it, it hasn't really gone too much above that level. Whereas in 2019 we went well above that, and then just sort of slowly faded. Even in 2019 we had you know a yearly high in June, and then a lower high in July, and then it sort of just kept trickling down. But what's interesting is is there actually was a, a bit of a move to the upside uh, around this time in 2019. And if you again if you average it out with 2015, it looks something like this. Okay, in 20, so if you, the average of those two prior years averaged out to, to reach around 1.88x off the yearly open by day 308, we're currently at 294, right? 290, yeah, 295, 295, and it's at 1.8x, right? So not that dissimilar from what we've previously seen. I did just want to remind people of this. And, you know, again, this stuff is not something you can take to the bank, but I, I will at least say that. If you were to look at 2022, the bear market year, and average out 2014 and 2018, what you'll notice is that 2022 ended up basically following the average of the last two bear market years, right? So it more or less followed that average. And so then it's led me to think that perhaps the average of 2015 and 2019 could be useful to follow in in this pre-having year and so far i mean it has been right i mean the, the the move off these off the yearly open of course was was better in 2023 than it was for these averages but i mean if, if this sort of down move that occurred in 2015 had occurred just say a couple weeks before and you just were to shift this low here up to this one you can imagine it, it would look uh somewhat similar at least in that initial move off of the lows but anyways, I think it's an important thing to look at. I, I remember, you know, 2019 um, distinctly and, and, you know, getting excited for, for these for these moves. And then we still didn't really go anywhere by the end of the year, right? We still sort of just hugged this range for the rest of the year. Um, and then in 2020, what ended up happening is we sort of rallied. Then we had our recession and then we, you know, we went to QE and, and, and low interest rates, and then Bitcoin, you know, absolutely took off. So I thought that was an interesting thing to look at. Before we wrap it up, I, I just want to briefly take a moment to show what it looks like for Ethereum. Uh, and of course, we don't really have as much data for Ethereum, but you can at least look at what's going on in 2023 and compare it to 2019 and see that, you know, at this point, we're not really that, we're not, it doesn't really look that much different than where Ethereum was in 2019, you know, where we are now in 2023. And you can see that as we got into the very end of the year, Ethereum did continue to sort of slowly drop off. And one of the things that we've said before is that 
you know, there's a chance like 2019 where Bitcoin closes above the yearly open, but Ethereum does not. And that's what, one of the lessons we saw in 2019 was that Bitcoin closed the year above its yearly open. Ethereum closed the year below its yearly open. And that's one of the reasons why the Bitcoin dominance, went, in fact, went up so much. You can also take a look at, at another asset, just to give you an example, and look at like Cardano, ADA, and look to see 2023 compared to 2019. It's not really that dissimilar. I mean, in fact, you can see that ADA got a little bit of a move. And, and the last time we did a video on ADA, we even talked about how you know, it could it could get these moves. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, um, but you know we'll see how the end of the year materializes. You can see how it ended in in, in 2019, and um, we'll see if it plays out that way in 2023. If you guys like the content, do make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. I told you I was going to keep this one short, and I will try to stick to that. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.